This is the Greater Lagos Vision and I'm your host, Love Ikuku Oyedokun. The overall target of the Governor Babajide Sawulu administration has always been to develop a robust infrastructure portfolio across the length and breadth of the state with the aim of creating a competitive business environment. Therefore, deploying modern infrastructure will yield multiple dividends for Lagos and its residents. This is the Greater Lagos Vision. Welcome once again. This episode features rents. Lagos State Government sets aside 5 billion naira to kickstart state's monthly tenancy scheme in January 2022. Housing. Governor Sawalu to train 1,000 artisans in Mastercraft, commissioned 774 housing units of Lagos homes at Shongo Tedu, Phase 1. Infrastructure, Sawolu commissioned three road networks in Victoria Island. IGR, largest contributor to national non-oil revenues, Lagos boasts of 45 billion naira monthly. Sylvester Oromoni's death, Governor Sawolu vows to ensure prosecution of corporates, condemns bullying in schools. Sexual-based violence, Dr. Ibijoke Sawonlu takes advocacy campaign to transport workers. These and many more when we return. The Lagos State Government has set aside 5 billion naira to kickstart the state's monthly tenancy scheme in January 2022. The State Commissioner for Finance, Dr. Rabi Uluwu, dropped this hint at the second Lagos Real Estate Marketplace Conference and exhibitions. It's been two days of frank and open talks by stakeholders in the real estate sector in Lagos. The conference touched on many issues ranging from financing to legal frameworks, land grabbing, tenancy, among others. Commissioner for Finance Rabi Uluo told the gathering that the new monthly tenancy concept is aimed at alleviating difficulties experienced by tenants and fears of landlords in the event of paying rents. This solution will create resilience throughout Lagos, meaning that people who used to pay their rent and like, like many of us, all of us here, how will it feel if your rent are, let's say, a million naira and you are now have to pay 98,000 naira per month? It's going to grant a lot of relief to negotiate. If you are in a present tenancy and you want to get into the scheme, we have a process where we will onboard you from being a tenant, paying directly to the landlord, to a tenant coming under the scheme. The scheme goes ahead and pays that yearly rent to the landlord, but gives you the option of paying that rent on a monthly basis. As excited as the news sounds, it certainly cannot be for everyone. For instance, I have a property on the mainland, nine flats. As of today, only two of the tenants are current. We have tenants that paid last 2019. And the legal process in the state prevents you from taking drastic cash Financial troubles. And does this scheme have any plans to sort out for such a tenant if such a case happens? Special advisor to Governor Somulu on housing, Toke Benson Awoyinka was on hand to allay all possible fears and concerns. That burden of that yearly rent is taken completely off the tenant and the landlord gets his money up front. So I think it's a win-win. It's a social investment program by the Lagos State Governor, Mr. Babayide Olushola Somulu, and I think it's something that is um, applaudable. It's something that has come to stay in Lagos and we're looking forward to it actually starting off in January 2022. I'm particularly excited about the government's initiative. 
to begin to look at a way to make uh, rent so particularly payable because first you have to start from occupancy or rentals before you move into ownership. Everybody cannot own homes. A lot of us are still tenants. But again, we have to create a situation where it is easy for people to rent houses and be able to pay on a monthly basis. The two-day event organized by the Lagos State Real Estate Regulatory Authority, Las Rira, had as its theme, Lagos, 21st Century Real Estate Investment Hub. Local artisans and craftsmen in Lagos State are about to experience improvements in their capacity through training. This is aimed at reducing the incidence of building collapse, cost of property development, and enhanced quality in housing development. Governor Babajide Sawunlu disclosed this during the commissioning of 774 housing units of Lagos homes at Shongo Tedu Phase 1 in Etiosa local government area of the state. Shongo Tedo Phase 1 consists of 744 homes in 62 blocks of 12 homes each. There are 248 one bed, 248 two bedrooms, and 248 three bedrooms apartments in the scheme. At the commissioning, Governor Sawulu said that the government had to continue to build decent homes in livable communities for people. This is so that they can be psychologically and socially stable enough to contribute their quota to the development of the state. This is one location that people will live in peace and people will also have full recreational facility because the ambience speaks for itself. It's well laid out and they've rolled out all of the other amenities that have been provided in this community. As you know, shelter continues to remain a basic need for human survival after food. Humanity is well preserved and protected when decent shelter and decent accommodation is made available for them. Also, apart from fostering an enabling environment for family life and raising of future leaders, homes has become a place where we need to take proper attention to. It has to be well planned and it has to come with a community-like thought in which we can reduce incidents of security challenges amongst themselves. Governor Sawonlu has a plan to bridge what he termed as the skill gap in the sector. About 1,000 artisans have been earmarked for the training package tagged Mastercraft program. Clean up and will erase issues around people falling prey and falling victim you know, of undocumented land. Also, it's important for me to assure you that we're finalizing our EGIS where we will have survey, we will have land title, CFOs, electronic ones at the tip of a button. We're almost there. We're doing a recce survey that will ensure that all survey maps are properly, you know, tagged in Lagos and you can collect your um, CFO or your proper title or you can actually do a search within um, a few minutes, you know, so in the comfort of your, of your home sometimes. If you also need to come to Alausa, it will be available for you. So these are some of the major land reforms that we're doing to ensure that people have access, you know, to proper title and people have access to being able to determine what is the real owner of a piece of land. I think another thing that we need to talk about when we do houses like this is the economic benefit of it. You know, there are several artisans that will realize that we need to continue to train, you know, when we build houses like this. There are electricians, there are bricklayers, there are, there are, there are plumbers, and there are tilers. And so working with the Ministry of Wealth Creation, working with the Ministry of Housing, and working with the Ministry of Poverty Alleviation, we are designing a scheme where we can continue to train and retrain on skill labors. We do not want our jobs to be taken away by other nationals. Let our own children, let our own boys and girls, let our own youth be the ones that will have the full benefits of government interventions like this. So in the coming year, 
when we call on you, that what skills would you want? Please, let's get our wards and our children that are interested to get signed on so that they can indeed have their own skills. They can know and they can be well-trained um, at being able to deliver when we have housing estates like this. The State Commissioner for Housing, Moruf Akinde Rufotai, is confident that the Lagos homes will impact greatly on the housing deficit in the state. He enjoyed negotiations to continue to support the state government by paying their taxes. This, he said, provides the necessary ingredients for a progressive and peaceful governance. The completion of this scheme, of this scheme brings to us all the joy of fulfillment because of the immense benefits being added to the lives of the people of Lagos State, particularly those in the Tiosa area. In, complete, in completing and delivering this modern housing estate to the people today, Lagos State, under the leadership of Mr. Governor, is articulating loudly for all to hear that this government is here to serve the people with the best of intention and nobility. This is another move by the state government in delivering the dividends of democracy to the people. Adiola Hopewell, Idowu Taylor and Afribank Church Streets in Victoria Island are now wearing a new look following the commissioning of three network of roads in Victoria Island, business central districts by Governor Babajide Sawunlu. The governor is optimistic that the roads will not only aid connectivity and ease traffic, but will also boost economic growth in that axis. This is phase one of the urban regeneration program of the Somulu administration. The three roads were approved for reconstruction in the year 2020. The former ring right in the heart of the highly commercialized area of Victoria Island. They are respected to discharge traffic through Sanusi Fafuan Street into the famous Akin Adishola Street. Governor Sawoli noted that the commissioning of the rules clearly demonstrates the audacious reforms carried out in critical sectors of the state's economy. Again, this is in line with the STEM's development agenda. The completion of this road validates our promise to improve the quality of life of all negotiations, promote massive social economic growth, and reciprocate the support that we have enjoyed from this constituency in the past three years. Of these three roads being commissioned today, Adiola Hopewell, Afi Bank, and Idowu Taylor, two are one-way road, which is Adiola Hopewell and Afi Bank. And Idowu Taylor, it's a two-way street. The governor promised to ensure that all axes of the state enjoy the current administration's plan to develop the state. He then appealed to negotiations to support his government towards achieving a traffic-free state in line with the planned intermodal transport system. The governor reminded the residents that the project belongs to them. Residents must safeguard and ensure proper usage and protection of the infrastructure to ensure long-lasting service. Doing this will free up government resources so that we can do a lot more. I know that with the support of the community leaders and people in Euro Victoria Island, the sustainability of this road is certainly guaranteed. And it's important for us to note that we're not just doing this in high bro Victoria Island alone. We're doing it, like we said, in almost all nooks and crannies of the state. It speaks to the fact that we engage and we listen to the specific needs of the citizenry in their quest for infrastructural upgrade. Prior to the reconstruction of these strategic roads, they were in deplorable state with a lot of complaints by the business community as it relates to the perennial flooding, the inadequate parking facilities, the unlit roads, the reduced carriageway width. It is the hope of many that with the road rehabilitation and upgrade, the challenge of flooding and inadequate capacity will now become a thing of the past. The Lagos state government says it has grown its IGR from 600 million naira monthly in 1999 to over 45 billion naira monthly as of December 2021. The governor's keynote address was delivered by the Commissioner for Finance, Rabiu Olowo, at the opening ceremony of the 149th meeting of the Joint Tax Board. 
is the 149th meeting of the Joint Tax Board, thus APS body for tax authorities in Nigeria. Governor Babajide Sawunlu was represented by the Commissioner for Finance, Rabiu Oluwu. He acknowledged the significant reforms that the JTB has implemented or spearheaded, especially in recent years. Lagos is by far the largest contributor to national non-oil revenues, corporate income taxes, VATs, custom duties, and others add to the coffers. Sawonlu lamented that subsequent redistribution of resources does not reflect the contribution of Lagos State. Our share in this redistribution fails to take into account the demographic infrastructural burdens and pressures that accompany being the economic nerve center of the nation and also a former federal capital territory. He disclosed that Lagos has grown its IGR with an astounding increase of 7,400%. It all began with ensuring the foundational autonomy of Internal Revenue Service is implemented whereby Lagos State Revenue Administration Law 2006 helped achieve this. Executive Chairman Lagos Internal Revenue Service is Mr. Ayodele Subur. He opened up on efforts being made to improve on tax administration and ease of doing business in the state. Technology has also become a necessity for enhanced responsibility and accountability in the tax system. The cornerstone of development, really, is the payment of taxes. Payment of taxation is the most sustainable means of generating revenue. We all know that, you know, our indefatigable governor needs the funding for development. Application of technological solution to ease processes, procedures, and lifestyle in the 21st century can be seen as a natural consequence of the global development and we can only look forward to improving our ways of doing things. Hopefully, the deliberations from this forum will bring about practical solutions on critical revenue issues and fiscal federalism. The governor of Lagos State, Babajide Somolu, has spoken tough against bullying in schools. This is against the backdrop of the death of 12-year-old Sylvester, beaten to death by his seniors in Dowen College in Lagos. The governor said such an act would not be condoned in private or public schools in the state. He spoke when he commissioned a newly built female hostel, a 12-classroom block, and other facilities at Lagos State Model College, Igbokuta, in Imuta local government area of Ikorodu. The official commissioning and handing over of a newly constructed female wholesale block, a 12 classroom block, reading rooms, and a laundromat brought a lot of excitement to the students. It was also another sober moment as a minute of silence was observed in honor of Sylvester Oromoni, the Dowen College student killed by bullies. The three students of Ojodu Grammar School crushed to death by a truck were also remembered. Governor Sawon Lu admonished the students to do away with bullying and promptly report such to the school authority. He appeals to the teachers to give listening ears to the students. In all of our schools, we need to eradicate bullying to the barest minimum. We need to ensure that junior students are not bullying the junior ones. They are not sending them on false errands. They are not subjecting them to hardship. And the junior ones are giving the senior ones the needed respect that they deserve so that we all can live in peace and harmony. Commissioner for Education, Mrs. Folashade Adefisayo acknowledged Governor Sawunlu for his sustained passion and significant contribution to the education sector in Lagos State. When he came into office, our governor made promises to the state and to the education sector in particular. The state would deliberately focus on education as a major pillar 
in the themes agenda, ensure yearly increase in budgetary allocation, complete all outstanding projects to the highest possible standard, invest in new schools, rehabilitate and upgrade existing schools, and also integrate technology into teaching and learning. Ultimately, the governor has covered the whole value chain of education and all these promises have been met. The newly built female hostel is 182 bed capacity. It has house mistress quarters, 12 classroom block, and other facilities. This will certainly make learning and teaching conducive for students and their teachers alike. The wife of the Lagos State Governor, Dr. Ibijoke Sawunlu, has urged members of the National Union of Road Transport Workers, NURTW, to stand against sexual and gender-based violence. Dr. Sawunlu paid a sensitization visit to the state headquarters of the NURTW in Okwaba area of Agege. The 16 days of activism against SGBV has seen Dr. Ibijoke Sawunlu through the length and breadth of Lagos State. She's been bringing to the fore her desire to end sexual and gender-based violence in Lagos State. The state headquarters of the National Union of Road Transport Workers, NURTW, was not left out. Led by their chairman, Musiliu Akinsonya, also known as MC Oluomo, the transport union workers paid rapt attention as Dr. Ibijoke Sawunlu drove the message home in their native language. I know a lot of you are aware of sexual and gender-based violence. Um, my um, Yoruba teacher here, if if we look for my local you know, it's it's um, forceful forceful um, friendship and sexual advancement with a fellow colleague. It is not allowed. She told the union that the state government had enacted a law that supports a sex offenders register to name and shame perpetrators. She also spoke against the intake of alcoholic beverages and mistress which could trigger mental health and SGBV issues. We have realized that a number of our youths are taking a lot of substances, substance abuse, drug abuse, in different places. Some in the hotels, some in the car parks, some in the garages. You people are my ambassadors. When we see things like that, it is not acceptable. We cannot allow our people to be damaged by substances. Wife of the Deputy Governor, Mrs. Oluremi Hamzad, was also in company. She urged parents to wake up and be vigilant in protecting their children. In his welcome remarks, the state chairman of NURTW, Musilu Ayinde Akinsoya, popularly known as MC Uluomo, commended Dr. Ibijoke Sawunlu for the advocacy against SGBV. Various information materials were distributed to members of the NURTW who were drawn from across the state. This is where we draw the curtain on this episode of the Greater Lagos Vision. I'm Lovikuku Oyedoku. Bye for now.